time you fight for Bad Beat 8, that'll be closer to your 22nd yeah. week of training camp. Um, not every fighter wants to do something like that. I mean, do you just feel that's more comfortable? You want to be active, you want to always be training? Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, like I said, I, I, I grew up playing sports. Sports is my outlet from a, from a lot of things. You know, I had a rough childhood. Um, you know, so sports was a big outlet for me. So, you know, I didn't have off seasons. You know, one season I'm playing soccer, one season I'm playing basketball, another season baseball, another football. So I'm just, you know, I'm just used to constantly, constantly doing something and never really, you know, taking time off. You know, and when I found MMA, you know, it's not like baseball or football where it's an off season where you go and chill. It's year round, especially early on in my career. You never know who's going to call you to come fight. You know, so I like to always be ready. Um, you know, we have a ton of training partners, you know, we have like, you know, we have a crew of guys, like 15, 20 fighters, um, you know, so I'm always here around here helping them train, you know, and, and you know, you got to be in shape, you know, to be able to compete with these guys, you know, if I take some time off and come back, I'll get my butt kicked in the gym, you know, so I'm, I'm, I always have to be in the gym, I always have to be in shape, so I'm just constantly training, and that's what, I, that's what I'd rather do, I'd rather be in the gym training. You know, never better. Um, I've been training for like the last 12 weeks really hard. So, you know, it's just gonna roll over into that. Um, so pretty much it's almost like a 17 week camp. It's just non-stop training. Um, so, it'll be my first um, first time fighting five minute rounds. Um, should have no problem with that. During practice, um, we do five minute rounds. And I do six hard rounds without, you know, without even feeling gas at all. So, feeling pretty good. You like that? Pretty much training every week. Yeah, um, I mean, for me, going on any like little vacations or whatever, or not training or stopping in between fights is, is boring for me. I'd rather be in the gym training all day. Um, you know, bringing my wife, bringing my newborn son, having him come watch me train, um, and then you know, just going home and relaxing. But um, yeah, I'd much rather be in the gym all day training. Uh, it was pretty awesome, you know. I had to I had to have a little me. Um, you know, it wakes me up at night. You know, sometimes I don't get a lot of sleep, but um, I'm used to it. You know, um, you know, being in pretty good shape, you know, helps. I need like four or five hours of sleep to be able to have a fully functional day. Um, you know, but uh, you know, waking up and you know having a little you next to you, it's Music. pretty awesome. I think it depends on your mental state if you're hungry or not, and if you're you know if you get to a fight and you're not injured. Some guys go, oh, I train so hard, I'm gonna take a month off. I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna get fat. Some guys say, I wanna build my record, I wanna get to 10 and 0, 8 and 1, whatever, and get to the UFC or whatever. So they'll fight as much as their body lets them. And you know, if he uh, he's fought recently and and got out of it injury free, and you know, probably took a few days to rest and then right back into it. You know, now, like I said, it all comes down to uh, to the fighter. I think you know, some guys mentally they just they need that rest. Some guys, their drive is, I'm going to build as many fights as I can, get as much experience as I can before before I get called to the big show. So I think that's kind of what he's doing. Do you think it is a jump for him to go from from Marvin Madariaga with us and then taking a couple fights in between and now fighting for Fazian now as the main event? Yeah, it's, you know, I used to train, I've trained with Jared a long time. I've known Jared a long time. He's a good friend. Um, and, uh... You know, it's a big step up for, for Terran, but you know, he has nothing to lose. He's five and one, um, and he's fighting a guy who just fought in the UFC. So he's, you know, on paper, not supposed to win. So if he wins, it's huge, then now he's you know, six and one or seven and one after this, and just beat a UFC guy. If the UFC's not calling after that, then, then you know, and if he loses, well, so what? He fought, he fought a UFC guy. The thing about Jared is, <clears throat> Jared is extremely tough and, and impossible to finish sometimes, you think? Like, he's really hard to finish. Um, but Jared is not, Jared's a power puncher and a brawler. Uh, Terion's got really good technical boxing, and both guys are really hard to finish on the ground. It's not gonna. Be, it's definitely not gonna be a ground fight. They're they're both. E they're probably equal on the ground. It's not Jared's strong point. It's not, It's you know. They're they're both good everywhere. But I think it's gonna come down to what, what wins: technical striking or power striking. And I think that's that's the difference. Not to say that Terrence doesn't have power, but he's a very good technical striker. Definitely, you know, changing diapers was a new thing for me. I haven't changed a diaper since, geez, I don't know when, since my niece. And I was like, you know, I was like three years ago, and I rarely did that when I watched her. But yeah, definitely changing diapers, wake up in the middle of the night, making bottles, um, you know, just you know, just taking care of a, you know, of a life.
pretty much. You know, be responsible for someone's life other than your other than yourself. Um, so definitely, yeah, working around my schedule. I, I have a full time job. You know, I train you know two times a day. Um, you know, so definitely making time for my wife and making time for my kid. Uh, you know, it's definitely a big priority for me. And um, I'm I'm just super busy. I'm focused. I'm busy. So. You know, my mind's not drifting off or anything else. You know, I'm focused on training, focused on being a great dad and being a great father. I mean, uh, husband. All right, my name is Cassie. Where is Jaden? And Jaden, how old is Jaden? He's three months. Three months old. So, if we do the math, Terion had a fight with us at Bad Beat 7, and then right after, he was born. However, that means you were pregnant the whole time. I So, how did Terion and you balance it? How do you balance everything with being a uh, professional fighter? Well, um, it's not easy. And, uh, well, I'm always at the gym with him, so I guess it makes it easy for him as well. And we work by each other, so he just picks me up and we go to the gym. And you said the little man likes coming to the gym? He does. Do you ever get nervous for him? All the time. Is there any, I mean, I want to say added nervousness just because he is fighting a guy who just came out of the UFC? No. Absolutely not. I've always had the same confident whether when he was an amateur up to this fight. It's, you know, I, it's just regular nerves, no, no added nerves. And I know that he's a strong fighter and I know his skills. So, not, nothing more than normal. Like I said, um, we're usually at the gym with him, but when he goes by himself, obviously I'm in charge of the baby. But um, he helps out, I mean, when he's not training. If he doesn't go to work, he watches the baby. So, you know, we work together and we make it work. How excited are you for him to be the main event of an event, of a fight? I'm really excited because I know how bad he's wanted to be a main card. So, it's, it's very exciting. Um, when he tells you he wants to fight in the UFC and you watch UFCs and you see all those guys in there, I mean, what what are you what are you thinking when he says I want to make it to the UFC? Um, I believe he could do it. I know he can do it if, if he, he sets his mind to it. And I mean, we've gone to UFC fights, and it's a great thing. And to see him there, it would be awesome. Dedication, sacrifice. We always hear that from the fighter on his side, but. The wife, the family, that's also dedication and sacrifice, isn't it? It is. You want to talk a little bit about that? Um, I guess it's just the presence of him. You know, I mean, yes, he, we're with him at the gym, but he's not with us. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's training and, yeah, it is it is a sacrifice in, in the family. But when you do have him, he does make the time for you and... Oh, yeah. It's call it, we call it family time. And it's like, whether it's, you know, going out to eat or just hanging out at the house, it's family time. He's not allowed to speak about MMA or look at it or text about it, nothing. So, yeah. Um, you know, I want to be a professional athlete. You know, I tried it in baseball, made it to the minor league level, didn't, didn't really work out. Um, you know, it left me, you know, kind of in a, in a limbo type of situation. I knew what I wanted to do. You know, so when I found him a and I was really good at it, you know, and I took to it right away, you know, be a professional athlete, you know, it's a dream come true. And then having a family, having a wife that supports you, you know, she follows me to every fight, you know, even when she was pregnant, she was coming to the fights, um, you know, and then having, you know, having a kid, you know, wanting someone to look up to you, you know, when you look back, when they get older, when they look back on your career, Say like wow, like my dad did that. Um, you know, it, it's a it's a dream. You know, I couldn't ask for, I couldn't ask for any more. You know, I'm super happy. You know, you know if I, you know, if this is how you know I would picture, if, you know, the perfect you know me picturing my life. This is how how it would be for me. someone who's coming off the street saying, I want to do this, this, I want to do this as a job, what do you tell those people? Um, I definitely tell them it's, um, you know, most people think, you know, I, you know I, I teach at, at this gym and my other gym, you know, people come in and tell me they want to fight all the time, and I, I tell them it, it's, it's not just coming in here and training and fighting, you know, it's dealing with the mental, you know, the mentality of it, you know, having a full-time job, because you're not going to make a ton of money when you first, when you first come into this, you know, so people coming off the streets, they, all they see is the UFC, they see the guys driving the big cars, you know, flying the private jets and stuff, 
you know, it's 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 not all you know glorified you know in the beginning. So it's tough. So you know, I tell them it's, it's going to take a lot of discipline. It's going to take a lot of sacrifice. And there's going to be days when you're going to wake up and you're going to think, you know, you know, why am I doing this? You know, do I really want to do this? Um, you know, and it's going to be it's going to be that you know determination um, and that discipline. You know, that's going to that's going to drive you to see if you really really want to do this. You know, so I let guys know from the from the beginning when they come in and tell me they want to be a fighter. I'm like, you know, this is, this is the breakdown of what I'm on. It's not all, you know, it's not all good. It's not all good. It's not all good. It's not all good. I'm not ever going to go out. You know, like, I don't have time for that. I'm not going to go out. My money is wrapped up. I'm not going to go out. I'm not going to go out. I'm not going to go out. You know, once I get to that, I really love you. I'm not going to go out. I'm not going to go out. Three times a year, take a vacation. You know, again, but... Uh, at the moment, you know, it's going to be tough, it's going to be grimy, and it's going to be days when you're not going to want to do it. This is where you start. This is the kind of place where you start to get there. Because this is as close as you're going to get right now. So when you fight Bama fights, and I think to make the transition to that level, it's going to be a small step, not a big step. Like coming from Camo, going to UFC, it's like it's too much for, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So that's a that's a good thing, you know. For him. And now him being the main event, it's uh it's gonna be a big step against one of, you know a former UFC fighter, you know, at a Bama show, you know, coached by Gokor. <laughs> so it's a uh, it's a uh, it's good. After the first Bama fight, we were it, you can't go backwards now. You can only go forward. It, you can't go backwards. So. Just because a fighter fought in the UFC um, and Terion has it doesn't mean Terion is not UFC caliber. It's just that he hasn't proven it yet because he hasn't fought a UFC fighter. So if that's what you're looking for, we bought to fight a UFC fighter. And when he wins, we'll go from there. You know, so. After the first Bama fight, we were, it, you can't go backwards now. You can only go forward. It, you can't go backwards. So, just because a fighter fought in the UFC um, and Terion has it doesn't mean Terion is not UFC caliber. It's just that he hasn't proven it yet because he hasn't fought a UFC fighter. So if that's what you're looking for, we bought to fight a UFC fighter. And when he wins, we'll go from there. You know, so. What you want to do, especially um, for getting the rear naked choke also too. If I, can, if I can prevent you from losing you know, if you're coming off of the naked choke and you have both hands to stop me, it's harder. But if I grab the cross wrist, I can push it out here. I can try to trap it with my legs here. And pull my around. Now it's two against one. My name's Joe Michael, and uh, I've been training here since September of last year. And how long have you been training with Terry? Uh, since September of last year. I've been training since I've been training with Terry on since September of last year. So when, like first, you know, first initial impression when you know, say you're a big guy, he come in, and you know, Terry can be your trainer. You're like. What was your initial impression? You know, I always try to keep an open mind when it comes to impressions with martial arts and just people in general, so I really didn't know what to expect. But uh, what I did find was that uh, out of all the instructors that I've had, Terion has like a unique way of being able to break down the techniques in uh, a way that's easily uh, able for, easy for me to comprehend, break down, and start applying into my own game. And, you know, he's uh, a really gifted teacher. Now, did, were you doing martial arts before? Have you done martial arts before before you came into this gym? Yeah, I have been doing uh, martial arts, uh, you know, pretty consistently since 2005, and before that, you know, I put in a good amount of time as well. Yeah. Um, so talk about just the workout, the routine, Terry, I'll put you through. It's rigorous. I mean, obviously, you're just you're exhausted. You know? One thing I really uh, love about Terry's workouts is that, you know, every single time we're, uh, you know, we're we have a pretty strict schedule of just going over techniques and then applying techniques and sparring. So whether it's jujitsu or MMA or kickboxing, whatever it is that we're doing, you know, we get a chance to uh, really apply those techniques. So, uh, you know, I know that he always demands uh, high performance and high energy when we're practicing the techniques. And then, you know, sparring is, is always going to is always going to you know, take a lot out of me, no matter you know if it's 40 percent or 100 percent. It's always going to be a great workout. How does it feel to be training with someone who, in you know, essentially in two weeks is gonna be fighting? I mean, how does it feel that he does his own training camp, yet he still finds, he still comes here, he works out with you, does the training here, and then he still is doing his other thing too? 
you know, I love that. You know, I, I you know, just feeling like uh, I'm a part of, uh, of his success and, uh, you know, he's a, just as much as he's a part of my success, you know. So, you know, I love going out to uh, watch Terry on fight. Yeah, I'll be looking forward to, uh, to this fight, and uh, you know what I mean. As a martial arts instructor, I really look forward to seeing him. I look up to him, and you know I'm definitely going to be in his corner rooting him on, and you know I'm just going to try to get in as much time with him as possible before he's like UFC. So. You know, even at my job, my coworkers, they 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 tell me all the time they look they 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 always they always check my Facebook and my Twitter because I'm always saying something you know quacky or funny or about what I'm what I'm doing. You know, it always gives them a laugh. Uh, you know, same thing with my friends. You know, you know everyone you know, who follows me, you know, is, is pretty you know in tune to what I'm doing. Um, they're, they're pretty interested in what I'm doing. Um, you know, especially you know. You know, even though I'm not in the UFC, it's kind of like oh, like he's a pro fighter. Like I know a pro fighter. You know what I mean? And so. You know, even in my amateur career, when I want some belts, you know, they come out and they take pictures with the belt. They walk around, walk around town with the belt. You know, so it's it's pretty exciting. You know, you know, being looked upon. You know, it's kind of you know, I don't I don't want to say icon using that word, but you know, just kind of like, you know, you know, a role model, a motivator. You know, I've had plenty of people you know come to me and you know like, you know, hey, like I know you're a, you're a fighter. You know, I've been trying to get in shape. I want to lose weight. You know, and I'm like, yeah, sure, come down to my gym. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll train you. You know, see how you like it. You know, and, and that that brought me down the avenue of actually becoming a personal trainer. You know, and training people, and I've had, you know, I've had at least you know about a dozen people. You know, have pretty good results. You know, you know, in training. So, you know, you know, it's pretty fun for me. I would say. Me, honestly, it's it's probably like a I would a 16-hour workday. You know what I mean? And the other, you know, eight hours is half of it sleeping, the other half is taking care of the wife and the kid. You know, so I'm pretty busy, uh, especially with traffic around here. You know, I commute from the 110, the 10 freeway, and the 405, the three first worst freeways on the planet. You know, so, you know, getting from, you know, place to place is, is definitely a struggle. And then having this new fast track system definitely doesn't help because they want you to pay for that. And it's like, so. Um, you know, definitely commuting and you know, having working a full-time job and full-time training, having a kid—it's definitely a grind. But um, I mean, no matter how many times you do it, you never really get used to it. You're still gonna have that road rage. But you know, definitely coming to the gym. And, you know, you take it out on these guys. They take it out on each other. We fight. You know, we hang out. We have fun. So you know, definitely, you know, being an MMA fighter definitely helps you deal with that. Go through the 16 hour work days, 22 week camp. I mean, is it just the satisfaction that you get to the fight? Um, yeah, definitely. I've been lucky enough to. Um not, not, I don't even want to use the word lucky, you know, just definitely being smart about my training. Um, I've never had to pull out of a fight due to injury. You know, I take, I definitely take care of my body. Um, you know, I make sure I do get, get rest when I need it. I feel like I'm, I'm overtraining. You know, I'll stop and you'll just take two or three days off and just, you know, go to the beach, swim, go to the, uh, to, to Gold's Gym, swim in the pool, hot tub. You know, get a massage. You know, definitely listen to my body, take care of my body. Um, but I mean, other than that, I mean, the 20, you know, the 16-hour work days is, I mean, it, it's become so regular for me. Is I don't really think about it. You know, people from the outside looking in going like, you're crazy. But me, it's, 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 it's ordinary for me. You know. Um, I've always been an energetic kid. I've always been fast in, any, in anything I do. That's what, was what I've been known for, whether it was football, it was baseball. I was always a speedy guy. Um, so, you know, when I came to MMA, um, you know, the first day I, I was trained, you know, first time I got in there and spar, you know, my training partner was like, wow, dude, like, you're, like, you're super fast, you're like the Flash. And I was like, hmm, I thought about it for about a week, and I was just like, you know, I didn't a nickname, and it just, you know, it just clicked, it just stuck. So, you know, so definitely, you know, just, just, just being fast, you know, Flash. Fits again. Your kid shows the same thing. You call him baby flash, little flash. Yeah, little flash. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Terry Hunt's manager. Uh, we've been working together for about three years already. Even uh, at the amateur level, he was doing main events. So something new to him. It's just like a bigger stage now. So he's 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 used to the spotlight. He's been playing sports his whole life. So you know, get a main event. It's nothing for him. You know, he goes to fight. He doesn't get nervous like other people. It's just another day at the office for him. Jericho Pazin's name for a fight, 
a lot of people just didn't want to take that fight. Yet, um, you, Ian, carry on himself. You guys wanted to fight. Why? Why? We have the confidence in Terry on. Uh, he's ready to make that step to the next level. Um, like I said, with, with, you know, Ian is, is a great jiu-jitsu coach. Uh, Ian thought he was ready. We talked about it before. And so uh, when Brett gave us a call, we're like, yeah, we're going to take it because Terry on's ready for the next level.